Merhaba, welcome to NBP Hot Seat. This is Zaf Quelo. Today we travel to Turkey, an emerging country in the nuclear energy program, and I'm joined by Mr. Anil Bolme, who is from the Nuclear Regulatory Authority of Turkey, where he is group leader for licensing assessment of Akuyu's NPP's primary circuit and associated system. He also leads the licensing studies of Sinop NPP and also the drafting of nuclear safety regulations and guides. Now, Mr. Bolme has extensive experience in the nuclear regulatory field. He has worked in various administrative and technical positions and in many national and international projects during his career with the nuclear regulatory body of Turkey, which spans almost 30 years. Welcome, Mr. Bolme. It's fantastic to have you with us today. Uh, hello, Mr. Coelho. Uh, thank you for inviting me uh, for this uh, interview. Fantastic, fantastic. So, Mr. Bolme, let's, let's get started. Um, what is the legal structure regarding nuclear safety safeguards and nuclear liability and the status of nuclear regulatory authority in Turkey? Uh, well, Zef, uh, we have a, a very new uh, legal structure uh, governing the nuclear energy field now. Uh, a new law, uh, the law number uh, 7381, uh, the nuclear regulation law, enacted uh, very recently uh, on 8th of March, actually, uh, this year, uh, just uh, one month ago. Uh, and uh, on the same day, a presidential decree, the presidential decree number 95 was issued. This law and the decree uh, forms a comprehensive system to uh, regulate uh, nuclear energy and radiation protection. This covers everything regarding nuclear energy and radiation protection, such as nuclear safety, safeguard, security, nuclear liability, uh, radioactive waste management, everything. So uh, it, establish, it also establishes the nuclear regulatory authority, the uh, organization that I work for. Uh, it's a short name is the NDK. Uh, it's an independent regulatory body. Uh, before this system, uh, there was the law number 2690 of 1982. It was an old law. Uh, it was governing the area and uh, the nuclear regulator was the Turkish uh, Atomic Energy Authority. Right now. It's, it's short name is like FAKE. It was an old school nuclear institution and it was responsible for everything under the sun regarding nuclear energy, including its promotion and research. Uh, it even operated some facilities uh, which are uh, subject to regulation themselves, like uh, uh, research reactor in Istanbul, uh, a gamma radiation facility, a proton accelerator facility in Ankara. Uh, with the start of the nuclear power program, uh, to align with the nuclear safety requirements, international nuclear safety requirements, uh, we had to separate types regulatory functions. Uh, this was tried to be achieved uh, during transition to the presidential republic government system in uh, 2018. There was a, a transition of the government system in Turkey. And uh, a decree law issued back then. Uh, this decree law was designed as a comprehensive nuclear law and uh, established the NDK. However, uh, the constitutional court annulled this decree uh, law on some legal technical uh, in uh, 2021, uh, last year. And uh, to fill the gap uh, created by this decision, uh, and uh, to re-establish the regulatory structure, the Turkish parliament issued uh, the new uh, nuclear regulation law. Uh, currently, we are on a, a transition phase uh, where we use technical regulations of all system uh, together with the new structure. Uh, we rapidly uh, update and issue new regulations in line with the uh, modern international requirements. So, wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. So. Earlier, you also mentioned, Mr. Bolme, that uh, your organization is, uh, is an independent organization. And of course, as we all know, in the nuclear sector, independence is a very vital uh, concept, especially when it pertains to the nuclear regulations. So how is the independence of your organization assured in the legal system, Mr. Bolme? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Zoyal, uh, you know, there are many aspects of independence uh, for nuclear uh, such as the political independence, uh, financial independence, uh, independence on acquiring and developing uh, competent human resources. There are many things. Uh, there are some uh, very clear provisions uh, in the presidential decree and also in the nuclear regulatory law uh, assuring uh, NDK's independence, uh, such as uh, 
a statement on, uh, for example, uh, no organ authority or person uh, can give orders or instructions to influence the decisions of the NDK, such as such uh, provisions. Uh, NDK has uh, its own independent budget uh, and uh, can select and train its own technical staff. And uh, uh, there is this thing, the, the NDK is associated with the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources. This may uh, seem against the independence, but uh, in the Turkish government uh, structure, uh, an associated institution does not have actually a direct hierarchical uh, connection with the ministry. Uh, so Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources has no power uh, to affect the technical decisions of the NDK. Uh, the president of the republic assigns the uh, president of the NDK and also uh, the members of the nuclear regulatory board, which is the uh, decision-making board uh, of the NDK uh, for four years period. Uh, so uh, NDK is as independent as a government institution can ever be. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and, that's, and that's very, very good to know. You know, having a very independent and yet robust uh, uh, re regulator is very crucial in, especially for an emerging country planning for nuclear. Now, moving on to the licensing of your Akuyu uh, uh, NPP, which I believe was started by the Turkish Atomic Energy Authority even before the establishment of your organization, the NDK. Now, do you, do you still use the same procedure for Akuyu NPP and do you also plan to use the same procedures for sign up, which is the which is the plan second uh, second site, and also for the future third NPP pro NPP, uh, Mr. Bulmain? Uh, uh, Mr. Zoyal, you are right. Uh, to get uh, the first application for ownership uh, of Aku NPP back in uh, 2011, uh, way before the establishment of the NPP, and uh, we received the construction license uh, application for the first unit uh, back in uh, 2017. Uh, even uh, first units construction license and second units limited work permits uh, were issued by TAI. Uh, with the establishment of the NDK, all TAI regulatory departments and their jobs are transferred to the uh, NDK uh, in uh, 2019. Uh, uh, new nuclear regulation have actually uh, altered the licensing system considerably. Uh, but until the issues of new regulations, uh, the old system will have to continue. Uh, the decree on licensing of nuclear installations of 1983 uh, forms the basis uh, of our current licensing system, actually. Uh, we use the procedure uh, under this decree, uh, of course, uh, with some adaptations, because uh, a lot of uh, uh, organization, organizations, institutions uh, are, have now different uh, jobs uh, under the new uh, nuclear uh, regulatory law. Uh, we will, of course, update the authorization regulations in accordance with the new uh, nuclear regulatory law uh, in the short term. Uh, and a uh, new authorization system will uh, resemble our experience from up to the licensing process. We, we uh, face some problems, we uh, find some solutions to them. Uh, so uh, we will try to facilitate, uh, clarify, and simplify the process uh, while, of course, ensuring uh, and even improving the safety. However, uh, we don't plan any, anything revolutionary. Uh, we have to stay as close as possible to the current system since there's an ongoing project for the time being. And until the issues of uh, new regulations uh, on authorizations of nuclear installations, uh, we have to continue to use uh, the current procedures. Uh, but uh, our intention uh, is to use the new system for future NPP projects and even. Uh, as far as it's applicable uh, to the Akuyu project. Wonderful, wonderful. And just a very, just a very quick point here, because the Akuyu project currently is using the VVR technology. In the event that different technologies are being adopted, right, uh, for your sign up and for future uh, plans, I mean, will the procedures change drastically, or will the majority of the of the procedures that you have you have embarked on for Akuyu remain the same, uh, Mr. Bolmi? Uh, well, uh, uh, when the power, power program started, uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't have a complete set of nuclear requirements. Uh, we had some uh, regulations, uh, technology, neutral regulations, most of them, uh, and most of them were the translation of the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency requirements. Uh, and some of them uh, were even uh, the previous versions of the uh, IAEA requirements. Uh, 
So, uh, we adopt a licensing procedure suggested by the IEA uh, in their documents uh, called INSAC uh, 22 and INSAC 26 uh, uh, to improve our licensing system uh, and uh, to fill in the gaps. Uh, we use a licensing based list of documents consisting of Turkish requirements, IEA requirements, uh, vendor country requirements, and uh, if needed, uh, third party requirements. Uh, uh, for example, the list for the APQI MPP uh, includes uh, Russian requirements together with Turkish and IAEA requirements. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the list for SINOP MPP, since the proposed ATMIA-1 uh, reactor design uh, was based on US requirements, uh, includes US requirements and uh, some uh, Japanese and French requirements also, uh, together with the Turkish and IAEA requirements. But, uh, it's a real challenge uh, to cope with two different system of requirements. Though, uh, the scientific and experience base behind the requirements are similar. Uh, there may be differences in application or approach. A good understanding of the requirement that its technical background is a must. Yes. Uh, when Sinop MPP project was active, uh, uh, we tried to improve our personal knowledge uh, on US requirements and ATMIA 1 technology uh, through pre-project -pre activities. Uh, uh, such as uh, a review study in collaboration with the French regulator ASN and its uh, technical support organization, organization IRSN. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, made this uh, review study for the safety options uh, of the Atmea uh, one We reviewed uh, that uh, study uh, and uh, later uh, we also uh, make a review and assessment study on, on the standard PSEN of ATMIA-1 uh, in collaboration with the uh, Sinop MPP project partners. Uh, this way, we try to get prepared. We try to improve familiarity of our stuff uh, with uh, a new requirement set and its application on a new technology. Uh, of course, uh, if uh, a new vendor comes uh, with a different project, uh, now, we may still uh, face some difficulties, uh, but uh, now we have more experienced personnel due to the uh, well advanced phase of up and PP licensing. I think uh, we can manage uh, through uh, intelligent use of pre, -pre project time uh, if we have to face a new vendor country uh, with a new requirements. Agree, agree. So, what do you think is the effect then? I mean, we talked about the effect on, on NDK. Uh, if you, should you be using different um, technologies, uh, what is the effect then of, of different vendor countries on the licensing procedure itself? And is your organization ready for such a challenge? I mean, you have already highlighted some, some, some points earlier, but perhaps you would like to elaborate uh, even further whether you are well equipped uh, you know, to, to, to adapt to, to different vendor countries on the licensing procedures, Mr. Bolme. Uh, well, as I said, uh, we are now more experienced than before, uh, since we uh, already gave uh, four construction licenses. Uh, and uh, I, th I, I think uh, we, can, we can get prepared in uh, due time. Uh, so uh, if, if a new project came, uh, we will uh, uh, do some pre-project activities uh, with uh, their vendors and uh, with them, uh, then uh, we will be uh, prepared. Wonderful, wonderful. So what is the current status of uh, sign-up NPP and the third future NPP? Uh, well, uh, I can only answer this through the IOF regulator. Uh, for the real project series, of course, you should ask it to the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources. Yep. Uh, currently, uh, we don't have any authorization applications for this project. Uh, Turkish Electric Generation Company is still the recognized owner for the uh, Sinop NPP project. Uh, even though we expect a site license application for Sinop MPP in, in the short term, uh, we are not aware of uh, details of the selected technology for this site. Uh, they uh, made a comprehensive site study using ATMIA-1 data. Uh, they may still apply with ATMIA-1, uh, using the data as an example of the generic PWR, uh, and it all depends on the vendor they will select uh, later in the process. Uh, we are aware of plans on uh, third MPP uh, by the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources. However, until now, uh, there is no uh, real official contact with us, as far as I know. Uh, there are some contacts uh, regarding our uh, licensing system to learn our licensing system and uh, such things. Uh, but that's all. 
So, hypothet- hypothetically speaking, let's let's assume that maybe for the second, this for for sign up, Turkey goes for a large reactor, and maybe for the third, the third site it decides, oh, let's go for SMRs. I mean, depending on the depending on the timeline for when the third site is coming up, if it's perhaps somewhere after 2035 or 2030, whereby most of the SMRs now, which are currently undergoing licensing procedures, might even be constructed and by post-2035 might, might, might be up and running. And let's say Turkey decides to have SMRs for the, for the third site. In your personal opinion, licensing a large reactor and licensing a small module reactor do you think it will be similar? Do you think it will be harder? Are you already thinking about this uh, as part of your, as part of your, you know, preparations and studies, uh, Mr. Bolme? Uh, well, uh, SMRs are a different story uh, because uh, we are familiar with the uh, large reactor. We are we are familiar with the uh, requirements for the uh, water cooled reactors. So there are a lot of different SMRs. There are water cooled ones, there are uh, molten salt cooled ones, there are gas cooled ones. Yep. Uh, it all depends on the technology. Yep. Uh, so, uh, but uh, in any way, uh, licensing of an SMR uh, is not much different uh, than the uh, large reactor. Uh, we have a requirement set and we have to compare our requirement set uh, with the uh, technological uh, aspects of the uh, reactor. Yep. Uh, so uh, we have to be sh- uh, sh- uh, we have to be sure about the safety uh, of the technology. Uh, so uh, even though SMRs uh, offer uh, simplified systems, uh, there are a lot of uh, first of a kind things there. So uh, we will need a lot of uh, assurance uh, from the vendors. Uh, uh, we, we we need a lot of uh, tests, a lot of uh, uh, proof of concepts. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, licensing of uh, first SMR uh, is more difficult than a, a large known MPG, uh, since uh, we don't, uh, we will not be able to get the uh, help of the uh, vendor country uh, regulator because uh, they will not know the technology uh, like us. Uh, we use a uh, uh, reference reactor concept, for example, uh, it is uh, 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 suggested by the IEA. Uh, you, uh, if if you are new, uh, then uh, you use a reference reactor uh, that was uh, licensed before uh, with an experienced uh, regulator. In SMR's case, uh, there is no reference reactor, so uh, I think it is it will be more difficult, but it, it can be achieved. Correct, correct. So I guess, you know, I guess for most regulators around the world, they'll be looking forward to to following the licensing process of countries which are in the process of licensing. I think that would be a, I think collaboration with, collaboration with international countries which are in the process of licensing an SMR, I think that would be very, very useful moving forward. I mean, for yes. for, for yes. Collaboration countries. is very important. Precisely. Yes, Precisely. Collaboration is very important. Uh, but Precisely. Still, uh, you 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 have the responsibility uh, of, of the reactor uh, in your own country. So, of course, uh, of course, of course, of course. Um, okay, I guess I'm moving on, uh, Mr. Bolme. So the Akuyu uh, project, if I understand correctly, is currently being implemented in a BOO model. Now, does it have any effect on the regulatory procedures and decisions if the Turkish government decides to participate in the Akuyu project, like how some countries? The governments are getting involved in their nuclear power project as a guarantee. Um, so if, if the Turkish government decides to, put, to participate in any of the, the three projects, Akuyu, sign up in the third NPP, or becomes a shareholder, now would it affect the NDKs uh, and licensing procedures in any way, Mr. Bolmi? Uh, well, uh, since the vendor and operator have uh, strong ties in the uh, BOO model, uh, it is uh, difficult for the regulatory uh, It is difficult uh, to be sure about the effects of uh, these ties on nuclear safety. Uh, we have to be extra careful in our review and assessment and the inspection. Uh, however, uh, the partnership structure uh, does not really affect our uh, licensing procedures. Of course, uh, we look at the organization structure and management system, uh, but uh, we direct our regulatory oversight 
uh, towards the owner of the entity and uh, through them to their subcontractors. Uh, the NDK is an independent regulator. Right? It's decision making. Uh, uh, we, we, we try to facilitate authorization process as much as uh, our safe, safety concerns are. Uh, so uh, governmental partnership, or even if the government is the full owner of the NPP, will not affect regulatory procedures or decisions. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So I guess, Mr. Bolme, as we as we wrap up uh, this interview, two final questions. The first one being, you know, are there any recent developments in your organization that you would like to share? Are there certain things that you know you are looking forward to, uh, Mr. Bolme? Uh, well, uh, the NDK is a newly established organization, even though it transferred consider considerable uh, knowledge uh, from uh, former TAEC. Uh, still, there are a lot of issues to deal with. Uh, uh, we have to develop and improve our infrastructure in many areas. Uh, so uh, through scholarships, uh, hiring processes, and in-house training, uh, we develop our human resources rapidly. But uh, we also use uh, EU, IEA, uh, even OECD and EA projects uh, to improve our capacity. Uh, recently, we established our uh, ISO 9001-based uh, management system. Uh, we also uh, have the ability uh, to patch uh, the necessary areas uh, through our technical support organization, the new text. Uh, uh, we update and issue new regulations uh, to align ourselves with the uh, modern international requirements. Uh, and in the short term, we want to be uh, one of the most competent regulators. Uh, so this I can say. Wonderful, wonderful. And a final question to you, Mr. Bol Bolme. You have spent almost 30 years in the nuclear industry. 30 years. That's a, wow, that's quite a long, long career. Yeah, and, and, and especially in, uh, you know, you've been in, in one organization also for very, very long. I guess my question to you is, what, what do you enjoy most about being in this, in this sector? What keeps you going, uh, Mr. Volme? Uh, well, uh, uh, I... Uh, Actually, uh, it, it was not boring for me. So uh, I uh, changed uh, my uh, profession a lot uh, during this time. Uh, I started on the promotional side. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, projects uh, for the promotion, promotion of the uh, nuclear industry. Uh, and then uh, I uh, transferred to the uh, regulatory side. Uh, I uh, enjoyed the uh, engineering work and also the legal work uh, together. Uh, so uh, I traveled that a lot uh, uh, because of the uh, old co collaboration efforts uh, in the uh, third sector. Uh, so I, I enjoyed my life uh, in the uh, regulatory work. So uh, uh, it, 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 was, it was a uh, good life so far. So I, I, want, I want to continue for some time too. <laughs> Wonderful, 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 and as and as and as, as I mentioned to you earlier, you know uh, the good things that hopefully you will get to see the Akuyu nuclear power plant up in real flesh, and you can you can tour the facility, and that will be like one of the culmination of your of your of your career of of the work that you're doing, uh, Mr. Bowmi. Yes, 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 definitely. Wonderful, definitely. wonderful. And, and I want to see it uh, uh, working uh, in a safe way uh, for a long time. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Mr. Bome, thank you so much for being with us today on NBP Hot Seat. It's really fascinating and fantastic to learn about the work which you and your organization are doing in the nuclear sector, not just in Turkey, but the work that, you, that you're doing, I'm sure will be, will be used as future reference for other countries when they're embarking on their nuclear regulation uh, uh, projects. Thank you very much, Mr. Bome. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Now to all our viewers, Feel free to leave your feedback and comments in the box below. Do subscribe to our channel if you would like to hear further insight from global nuclear leaders like Mr. Bolme. Still then, stay tuned for the next episode of MVP Hossi. This is Zef Coelho signing out. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Bolme.